I was desperate, you know, at the time I was 17, 18, unemployed, you know, and I was desperate to, you know, to get a break. And I knew that if I did get a try, I would, you know, I would grab the chance. I think it was always going to be boxing. I mean, I stepped into the gym as a 10 or 11 year old. Boxing just took hold of my heart straight away. I love everything about the sport of boxing. Hello, I'm Marie Crow, and this is We Become Heroes, the RTE Sports podcast that explores how elite athletes and sports people reach the top of the game and the lessons that they learned along the way. My guest today is three-time All-Ireland winner from Cork, Brian Corcoran. Brian, how are you? How is life? Hey, Marie. Great. Very good, thanks. Uh, obviously, we're all um, tied up with lockdown and over the last year and a half, but I think we're all looking forward to... Uh, Delighted to end the tunnel and uh, good weather this week and uh, looking forward, I'm actually off for the next two weeks, so looking forward to uh, to a break and some uh, some time with family. Well, you timed it very well because the weather is lovely. Uh, we might be all tied down and tied up with lockdown for the last while, Brian, but it hasn't kind of stopped us debating the um, health of Gaelic games and in particular hurling was under the spotlight for quite a while. How, how do you feel, it? where do you feel it is now? Do you feel it's in a good place? Yeah, I mean, the the game has evolved a lot since, I mean, it's 15 years since I played. Uh, the game has evolved a lot and uh, it's, it's very, it's a very different game to look at now and, and the way it's played. And uh, obviously the, the level of scoring, uh, the number of scores per game has gone gone through the roof. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of discussion around the rules and and maybe, you know, some of the changes to the rules and obviously a lot of controversy around the uh, the, uh, the sin bin and, and the kind of the professional foul type of thing. And, um, and you know some of it, some of it I find kind of frustrating. To be honest, uh, you know it's a hurling is a great game, and and sometimes I think we we just keep messing with it and and uh, in an attempt to to improve it. But but uh, I think it's 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 kind of rare that there's been a rule change implemented that has actually improved the game in my perspective. Um, so you know sometimes I think we, we just need to leave well enough alone. Um, and you know the the controversy, you know with the uh, the James Owen controversy a couple of weeks ago, you know, it was kind of hard to look at that that example and, and see that that's making the game better. You know, that that kind of a rule. Um, you know, for me, the 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 slitter is something that probably needs to be looked at. You know, the distance that is traveling, and uh, you know, um, a lot of the scores are are from you know 60, 70, 80 yards now. Um, I mean, back back years ago, we knew the sixty five yard, uh, you know, free. Um, you know, you were doing well to to kind of get that over the bar. Now, now 90, 100, 110 yards, they're they're hitting the the wire at the back, and and I know guys are stronger and guys are fitter, and there's there's, there's no doubting that. But uh, the the ball is definitely flying further than it used to, and uh, so that's the one thing I'd probably look at in terms of can do they need to pull that back a little bit? But in terms of some of the other rules, um, you know, I I, I think they should uh, leave the game as it is, and the game will always evolve, and the style of play will evolve, and it has. It has certainly evolved over over the last number of years, and uh, it's much more kind of position game now. And um, but the skill level, fitness levels, the strength levels are, are gone through the roof, and that's very impressive to see. Um, but you know, it's it's uh, it's almost becoming a shootout now with 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 free takers and uh, you know 12, 14 points a game in some some scenarios from from frees, and some of those are from 100, 110 yards out, and. Uh, um, you know, I, I, that's the one thing I would change is, is trying to rein, rein the that back a little bit. Puck outs, bypassing the half back line, landing in the in the full forward line. You know, it's kind of that that has really changed the game. But but in terms of fitness levels, strength levels, you have to embrace that. That's the way the world. That's the way the game has gone. The way the world has gone. So uh, I don't have any issue with that whatsoever. But uh, sometimes I think we 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 try to fix something that might necessarily be broken. It's mad to think it's 15 years since you played. When you watch the game now, and, and just, I guess, the, the different ways it's it's approached by the different managers, what kind of a role do you think you would play just positionally-wise? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, when I started out, I started as a, as a defender. Um, and, uh, you know, probably my, my favourite position at the time was centre-back. Uh, I wouldn't fancy playing centre-back in, in, in the current game um, because I think there's this... So much of the game kind of bypasses that area, um, and the days of you know long balls being dropped down on top of the half back line are 
well and truly gone. Um, I think as a, you know, looking at it now, looking at the quality of ball that's played in two, in the forwards, I would definitely love to play as a forward in, in the modern game because they're, you know, it, it's, uh, the, the, there's very little 50-50 ball going in, um, you know, so it's, it's a, uh, makes it very challenging for defenders and the, the attackers have seemed to have the advantage. Uh, you know, the ball is played out in front and there's, there's space and, and there's so much movement. Um, you know, it's a, it, it is very different to what it was 20, 25 years ago. Um, so if, if I was playing nowadays, I certainly wouldn't like to be a defender. I'd prefer to be up front. Well, in Clare, we have our forwards going into our centre-back role and it's working out all right. Uh, <laughs> it seems like it's been quite um, a, a good few weeks for core curling underage. Uh, good win for the under-20s, uh, a huge win for the minors over Clare and the footballers as well, doing well, beating Kerry. So core curling underage level and football seem like it's in a good place. Yeah, I mean, obviously the... the there was a long barren spill. There has been a long barren spill at senior level, um, but there was a very long barren spill at underage level as well. And and over the last number of years, you know, the at under twenty one level, and then when it became under twenty, obviously the they got close and the uh, you know got to an all Ireland final and and were close enough. Um, and obviously, you know, with the with the delayed final from twenty twenty being played there last week, it was great to uh, to get that win. Um, and uh, you know the. Very surprising scoreline against against Clare in the in the in the minor this week, but um, uh, but it's it's great to see Cork competing and 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 winning again, and uh, you know that that's uh, org as well for for the future, um, because you know you need young blood coming through, young players coming through to uh, to you know to put pressure on the, the existing players, and um, you know when you look at the Cork senior squad. Uh, you know they, they have a blend of of youth and and experience, and but some of those experienced guys aren't going to be around forever. So you need a constant pipeline coming through, and uh, uh, and thankfully it looks like this, uh, there's there's some promise coming. And at senior level as well, um, you know it's going to be a busy few weeks for both the footballers and the hurlers. What do you think their prospects are like for the rest of the summer, just given what you've seen so far? Yeah, it's it's um, I mean the, the footballers obviously you know it's 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 going to be tough against the the the, the carries of the world and there's no there's, there's no back door and but um, but I never obviously you know Cork got one over on on, on Kerry last year um, so I would never never write them off and uh, you know it's a, it's a a very kind of young new uh, Cork football team and uh, you know a lot of names wouldn't wouldn't be household names right now. So a lot of them have come up through the underage and, and uh, you know, so they're, they're kind of an unknown quantity. Obviously, Kerry are, are uh, you know, being touted as is the only team that can really challenge uh, the Dubs this year. But um, I would never rate Cork's chances off um, against Kerry. Uh, the, the Hurlers, you know, obviously it was kind of disappointing against Limerick. Um, you know, Limerick probably didn't play as well as they they can play and and uh, as well as they've played over over the last few years so i think there was an opportunity on the day for you know some of the some of Limerick's big players and uh, you know didn't play as well as they had in the past so there was an opportunity for cork but um but i think we're you know probably you know too reliant on 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 patrick horgan uh you know to come up with the goods every 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 day um and uh, but but anything can happen to the obviously they, they got a boy in the in the first round of the of the back door. So uh we'll see um you know what the, what what the draw looks like over the over the coming weeks. But again, I think the core hurling team, you know, on on any given day are capable of beating anybody. It's a it's a matter of uh, just you know getting the performance and getting everybody kind of synced together on, on the day. So um you know over the last four or five years they, they haven't been that far away you know we haven't we haven't won in all Ireland um, during that period um, but th- th- there's been a few near misses being beaten by teams who went down and won it uh, games that turned on you know uh, uh, somebody being sent off or referee's decision or, or whatever so they, they haven't been that far away um, so again I, I would never write off their chances and uh, it would be fantastic to see if if uh, if they could come through the uh, the back door and and uh, get back to Cork Park. 
Yeah, exciting times ahead for everyone that is left in the championship. So we're going to get into our set questions now. And I'm going to start with, um, what is your earliest memory of sport? Um, I think my, my earliest sporting related event, I, I was born in, in 73. Um, so I, I would love to say I can remember the, the court three in a row in 76, 77, 78, but I don't remember any of that. Um, my first sporting related event was actually Christy Ring's funeral, 1979. Um, and I'm not sure I even knew who Christy Ring was at the time. I was only six years of age, but when he died, it was a, I can remember it was a massive thing and it was, it was a massive story. And uh, I remember going to the funeral in Cloyne uh, in 1979. And uh, so that's probably my earliest sporting related item. Um, my brother was four years older than me. So I remember going to game, his games kind of 19, from 1980, 81. Um, but from a, from a sporting event, um, my, my earliest memory would be the Moscow Olympics, 1980. Uh, I can remember watching that. I always loved the Olympics. And uh, I can remember uh, Ifter, the shifter, uh, was his nickname, an Ethiopian athlete winning the 5,000 and 10,000. And uh, Steve Ovet and, and Sepko, their jewel in the 800 and 1500. So I was always kind of fascinated by, by um, athletics and, and the Olympics. And 1980 was my, my earliest memory of that. Who were your heroes growing up? Like who did you have on the wall or did you have anyone on the wall? Um, it might sound a bit, 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 bit lame, but my, my earliest hero was my brother. Uh, he, was, he was four years older and he was the one who kind of paved the way. Um, I saw him as, as he was the best player on his team. So I always kind of looked up to him and, um, you know, that was from early childhood. In terms of, you know, general sport, um, the guy I would have had on my wall was, was Michael Jordan, uh, even though I, I wasn't straight. I mean, funnily enough, I, I wasn't a huge basketball fan. Um, but he was a guy that just kind of transcended the, the sport. I, I thought he was an amazing athlete. And, and uh, back then, you know, we didn't have huge access to, uh, you know, TV shows or, or uh, basketball on TV, but I, I had a couple of his videos and I just watched those over and over. Um, from the golfing world, Fred Couples uh, was, a, was a big kind of hero of mine and Sebi Ballesteros. Um, and then locally more in, in, in GA terms, um, I guess, you know, people like Jimmy Barry Murphy uh, were, were people that I looked up to when I was, uh, when I was young. Um, can you remember back then, like, did you have a dream? Did you, you know, see yourself as somebody who was going to be at an Olympics or walking up the steps of the Hogan? I, even, though, even though I watched a lot of sport and, and, and uh, kind of loved all sport, um, I never saw myself beyond the hurler. Um, my dream was always to play hurling, play for Cork and uh, win all Ireland with Cork uh, from a very early age. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't see myself doing anything other than that. So when did you first realise that you had a bit of talent, that you were good at it? Um, I, I mean, I, 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 I never remember a time when, when I didn't have a hurling in my hand. I mean, from the earliest of ages, um, I had a hurling in my hand. And as I say, watching my brother... And he was kind of ma making the teams and paving the way. So I always, I always just believed that uh, that I that I would play for Cork. Um, and you know nowadays, you know kids are training at kind of four and five and six years of age, and that wasn't the case back, back when I was growing up. And under twelve was kind of the 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 youngest age group at the time. Uh, but I, I I was kind of playing under twelve, and I was when I was eight or nine. So I was kind of, uh, I suppose at that stage, I was, I was kind of playing, I was probably the only one my age playing uh, with the under 12s at that point. So I was used to playing with older, older kids, um, playing on the road, playing in the back, the backyard with my brother and, and his friends. I was always kind of up against older, older kids and, uh, and I felt I could hold my own. Um, so from that perspective, I, I always believed that, uh, that I would 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 play play for Cork and and win all win all Ireland's and that that's what I kind of dreamt about and and you know might sound arrogant or cocky or whatever but never really doubted that that it would happen I always just believed it would. When you look back at when your time when you were that age and the fact that you always had a hurley in your hand and I'd imagine that everybody that you were with had a hurley in their hand as well 
and look at nowadays do you do you see similarities or is it totally different with kids um i, I think it's it's very different now um like we, we didn't have we didn't have the options we didn't have the choices back then um you know we lived an outdoor life uh the whole summer was from morning to night you were out uh, either on the road or, or our playground was 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 the, the GA pitch. Uh, we didn't have great choices on TV. We didn't have computer games or PlayStations or Xboxes or any of those. We didn't have social media. We didn't have phones. Um, so it was really you had to kind of entertain yourself. And and the way we did that was through sport. And whether it was as I say playing playing on the roads with hurling a football or soccer or. Um, climbing trees or whatever we were doing it was it was active and uh um and i think nowadays kids have have so much choice um when it comes to sport but also also outside of sport and there's so many distractions um you know it's it's uh you don't see kids on the street anymore obviously there's a lot more cars on the roads now as well so uh, back in the day you know we'd be out on the roads and you rarely see a car pass um so obviously you know times have changed there but uh I think kids are just so, so many options and so many other distractions and, and quite frankly so many pressures nowadays that that we didn't really have back in back in the days so it is it is very different um uh and but not not saying that we were right and the kids of today were, were wrong it's, it's very very different circumstances and um uh, so many different so many different choices whereas back then we didn't really have a choice i, I lived next door to the ga pitch um so that was all we had to do were you big for a kid? Um, I was. I was always kind of probably big for my age, or you know, I was of the bigger folks in my age. I guess when I was, I was a skinny, scrawny teenager, um, but I was I was strong and uh, uh, certainly strong for my age. So when I was fourteen, I was kind of playing against minors and 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 not saying I was as strong as a minor, but I was able to able to hold my own, um, and I was. I was confident in my my own kind of strength and ability to to take a, a shot, we'll say from from the older guys. So um and that that was I mean I was I suppose I was just naturally not that there was no weight programs or mm-hmm. anything like that back then. Um but I was I was I was tall, skinny and scrawny. Um but I was I was strong for my age, I would say, yeah. And were you mature then the fact that you were able to to step up into environments that were were older kids were and and were you mature enough to be able to go in and and, and hold your own and, and you know not be intimidated by because you know it's three or four years when you're a teenager is a big difference yeah um i mean maturity is subjective i guess uh some people would say i'm still i'm still not mature but um <laughs> but when, when it came when it came to we'll say um confidence in terms of sport and hurling uh i always felt comfortable against against older older folks and to be honest I, you know i, I was kind of enjoy it and revel in it because i felt there was no pressure on me i was i was kind of the kid and the pressure was on the on the guy i was marking or whatever um so yeah i, I suppose I, I was i was i was mature i guess in terms of uh my my attitude and, and and approach to the game, but but then I was looking back and I was very insular then as well, mm. um, and I was probably overly focused on it and uh, you know not 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 um, not doing things that maybe other other people my age were were doing at the, at the time because uh, I was so I suppose radar focused on 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 hurling and, and sport at the time. Um, I didn't really have time to for for, for uh, getting involved in other stuff. So Gaelic games aside, did you play other sports? Soccer, swimming, cricket, anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, I live next to the GA pitch, so hurling football was was my life. Uh, you know, I dabbled and I played a bit of soccer, but um, again, the soccer pitch was was a few miles away, and you know, transport wasn't the same as it was then. And and to be honest, if I kind of found soccer a bit slow and and you know, so I didn't didn't enjoy it as much as, as as hurling. I I uh I always loved martial arts, so I kind of dabbled in a bit of martial arts. I used to do taekwondo and kind of messed around with a few other martial arts. Uh, I love snooker, and uh, I always loved golf as well. But um, 
golf wasn't really accessible to me as a as a teenager. I didn't really, you know, because the the courses you know weren't taking kind of kids in at that at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really kind of get into golf until I was in my uh, my twenties. So when you were developing as an athlete, as a sports person, what did you have to work on most? Yeah, it's interesting you use the, the word athlete. I mean, I never, as a kid, I never saw myself as an athlete. I saw myself as a, as a hurler. And because, you know, our, our lives are so active, um, you know, even, okay, we were playing matches, you know, night and day and uh, in hurling and football. And I was playing with different age groups, so you we were never short of a game. Um, but even when we weren't playing, you know, in organized matches, we were running around the roads or, or during lunch break in, in schools, we were we were out in, in the playground playing either soccer or, or hurling or football. So uh, I never had to worry about kind of fitness or never had to worry about, you know, the physical side of training or the, the, uh, the diet, nutrition aspect of it as a kid, because it just, it was just a lifestyle. I, I could eat what I wanted, and uh, I was exercising so much. I was just, I was just very naturally fit, um, and that's that's uh, that's something that obviously, as I got older, it became more of a more of a challenge in because, um, you know, the dietary and and uh, the fitness aspect of it and the rest and recovery, uh, you know, became a much bigger deal as I as I kind of be, moved into adulthood. Um, but I think the, the, the biggest thing I just focus on, uh, I always believe that, you know, to be a top class player in any sport, but but in hurling and football, I always believed you had to be strong off both sides uh, when it came to hurling and you, you had to be strong off both legs when it came to football. Uh, so that was something I, I always kind of uh, was conscious of and focused on to make sure that uh, I wasn't predictable in terms of I could only hit off my right or I, I could only kick off my right leg. I, I always worked on both and uh, and felt equally comfortable off right or left. When you were growing up, you were obviously playing for a lot of teams. When you look back in it now, what was the maximum amount that you played for? Um, like, I mean, I, I can't remember the exact number. Pro- probably when I was, um, when I was 17, I would say, um, 17, 18, uh, at that point, I was in college, so I was I was uh, my first year of college. I was playing, you know, freshers hurling football. I was on the senior hurling football with the college that I was four there. I was on kind of the minor under twenty one senior teams in in the club. I was playing minor under twenty one with with Cork hurling football. Um, so there was and there was our divisional sides in 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 football here in East Cork. So. I think at one point, one year, I was, you know, 14 or 15 teams uh, in, in the one year. And, uh, but that was just, that was just part of the course. That was, uh, you know, some of those teams obviously, you know, weren't necessarily training two, three nights a week. It is, uh, you know, you came together for, for games or whatever, and, and, and you can't be in two places at once. But um, I never saw it as an issue at the time. Um, but, I, but I suppose in hindsight, looking back, it probably did. Um play a role in kind of mentally just burning me out and uh, and I probably overdid it a little bit and uh, you know towards my kind of mid-twenties then I was uh, probably played a factor in kind of f- falling out of love with the game a little bit. That is quite a lot like back then was the word burnout used I know we use it quite a lot now and, and everyone's very conscious of what people are doing but was it in the vocabulary back then? I, I don't think so. Um, I've heard people use me as an example for for burnout, maybe because you know when I when I retired, um, you know in my in my kind of mid twenties, um, people said, "Oh, that's because he, he was burnt out and and and, and played too much." Um, I mean, but back back in the day, as I say, it was what I loved doing, and and I didn't think twice about it. But but some of the stuff that you end up ended up doing probably looking back was it was wasn't the right thing to do it was a little bit crazy i remember you know playing playing national league games with 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 cork down in parky keeve at, at you know half three on a sunday and then rushing rushing back home to to play a, a club league game that evening so uh, you know playing playing two games in in one day and obviously you're you're risking injury and because you're, you're not recovering and and uh, you know 
you know, I remember times he played played four games in a weekend, you know, two games on a Saturday, two games on a Sunday. And, but again, it was I didn't see anything wrong with that. It was I enjoyed it, and that's what I'd really like to do. The, the biggest challenge, I guess, at the time was, um, you know, obviously all of those all of those teams had a management team or had a had a manager, and you know, quite frankly, the manager was interested in in his team or, and uh, and I. I I found out, or I, I suppose I made a decision early that, um, now I'm not saying this is the case for all managers because some managers were looking out for you, but in some cases, you know, you felt the managers were were really just looking uh, to get the most out of you for the team. So I had to um, sometimes stand up for myself and, and kind of say, I can't train tonight or, um, you know, I need to give this practice game a, a skip because I played last night and playing again tomorrow. Um, so I, f- I found that you kind of had to uh, take control of it, control of it yourself. And uh, because in in some, not all cases, but in some cases, um, the managers didn't necessarily have your best interest, or weren't, you know, they obviously they were looking for results and looking for um, to get to get the the, the best team out. But um, but at times, uh, you know, if I was tired or if I was, I was always conscious of um, you know one of the reasons that that I, I actually did martial arts was uh for flexibility i was you know i was always conscious of uh, making sure i wasn't pulling hamstrings or, or any of that so stretching was a a big part of my my kind of teenage life and uh and i would credit that i never never pulled a hamstring uh throughout my whole career and i would say you know stretching and, and kind of looking after myself that way you know played a big role in that um so you know i was always conscious of um making sure that i was was Kind of fully warmed up and stretched going out before games, and if and if I felt this uh, my legs were tight, sometimes I would I would just say to the, if it was a if it was a training session or if it was a you know a, a practice game that didn't count for anything, sometimes I would tell the manager, you know I'm only going to play 30 minutes today, uh, and some people might have seen that as oh who does this guy think he is, um, but in in my head I kind of had to look after myself because uh, I got the feeling that in some cases. Nobody else was going to do it if I wasn't. It doesn't sound like you had time for anything else bar sport. Yeah, it was it was my life for for a long time. Um, absolutely. And looking back on it, uh, as I say, it was it was probably too big a part of my life. Um, and uh, you know, I did socializing and uh, going out and doing what what a lot of our other teenagers my age were doing. Um, you know, that, that took a back seat and, uh, but again, it was, that was probably because, you know, I was most comfortable playing sport. That was my comfort area. That's where, where I felt, uh, that's what I felt I was good at. Um, so I kind of just poured all my energy into that. A minor playing minor at 15 is pretty remarkable. Was it a huge deal back then? 1988, wasn't it? 1988. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was to be honest. It's kind of interesting how how that worked out because um, I was asked to go for it for a trial, and uh, even though I was, as I say, I was used to playing against older guys, um, I was asked to go for a trial, and I just felt, you know, doesn't doesn't I wasn't aware of anybody who played minor at fifteen, and and uh, my my brother had played minor before me, and he he. he I remember being up in, in Crow Park for the, the minor all Ireland final in 86 and my brother was playing and he was 17. Uh, so he he, was, he he played in 86, 87 and uh, I remember sitting there thinking, okay, uh, uh, how, long, how long, you know, when, when am I going to play? When am I going to be out in that field? So I was, I was targeting to, to kind of make the team when I was, when I was 17, the same as him. Um, but I got an opportunity to, uh, to go to a trial when I was, when I was 15 and, um, but I felt I was too young. And and I actually turned down the opportunity to to go to declined the invite, shall we say. Um and uh but then we 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 played and, and I had two teammates, John Dillon and, and Timmy Keller were teammates from my club uh, on the team and I went to the first round actually to watch them and, and they beat Middleton in or sorry, they beat Waterford in Middleton in the first round. And I was a spectator and um and they were they were to play uh Tipperary in the semi-final. Uh, we played Middleton in the uh, the minor championship um, in the intervening time, and, and I, I played well that day, and I was probably on Middleton's, Middleton's best player 
uh, at the time and, and the, or the Cork Miner best player at the time, David Quirk. And I played well that day and the, the Cork Miners were management team were there. So they came back to me after that ma- match and said, look, will, will, you, will you rethink? And uh, so I, um, it was easier to say no on, on you know, mm-hmm. on the phone as opposed to saying no, no um, kind of face to face. So I decided to, look, I'll give it a go. And, and I, they brought me up to Limerick to play a trial game against Limerick. And then the following week, uh, I was picked on the team for the most final play to Prairie. So it was, I was, it was kind of, re- I was a reluctant uh uh, minor at 15 but um, but obviously looking back at it, it was I was delighted to have done it and uh, and it was it was a great experience and it was my first time playing Crow Park that year in, in 88 unfortunately we, we, we lost the all in final but we lost to a fantastic Kilkenny team with DJ Carey and Pat O'Neill and Charlie Carter and these guys so um, but it was, it, was, it was a great experience So what moment did you think um, I'm going to make it I can make it at the top level um, as as I say, and, and you know, this might come across as arrogant or or, or cocky, but uh, when I was seven eight years of age, I believed I was gonna I was gonna make it. Never never doubted it. Um, and I know not that I told I never told that was in my own head. I never told anybody else that. Um, but I always believed I was gonna make it, and I never I never never doubted it. And to me, it was just a matter of committing myself, and for the years to roll by, and for Again, when I was in Crow Park, watching my brother playing, playing the uh, the minor roller in '86, I was I was 13 at the time, and and I was I was in my mind it was I was trying to foresee the future. I remember sitting in the upper deck of the, the Cusack that day, and uh, I was trying to imagine what year it would be when I would run out there. It wasn't a case of would I or or will I. It was is it going to be two years or three years or four years. Um, and as I say, that that can come across as, as as maybe kind of arrogant, but as you know, that's not something I would have told anybody at the time. But I believed it in my head, and uh, I'm a strong believer. If if you don't believe in yourself, and if you don't um, aim for something, and uh, you know, aim high, you're not you're not going to achieve it. So um, so if, I, I I never there was never a moment where where I felt yeah I'm I'm going to make it. I, I from seven years of age I believed I was going to make it. that self-confidence and self-belief is, is something that a lot of people look for and they're trying to find it and you know it's often an issue for people and they go and try and, and get a bit of help with trying to to find that confidence where do you think that it came from that you had it from such a, a young age um i, th- I think i mean uh, you know obviously it's one thing thinking it, but you have you have to back it up as well and and uh so you know i, I practiced and it was what I loved to do. And even when I was on my own, if my friends weren't around, I was hitting a ball off the side of the wall and it was, and, uh, you know, I was always creating little competitions for myself. And there was, you know, we had a, there was a derelict house, uh, down, down the road with, with windows and doors that had been kind of knocked out. So, you know, I was playing games there, you know, imagining I was in another final and I have to get it through the window, you know, last puck of the game type of thing. So, Playing those games and kind of putting putting yourself under pressure and trying to imagine the, the real life situation. Um, so it's it's uh, to me, and I'm not sure where it came from, but but I, I always felt you know why would anybody else be better than me? Why why could I not be as good as anybody else when it came to hurling? As long as they put the heart, the, the work in and uh, and you know it was the, the, the kind of confidence I, I guess grew from. From always having having holding my hand and uh, it felt like an extension of my arm and um, that's just what I wanted to do and I believe that if I uh, worked hard at it and put enough time into it, there's uh, like I as good a chance as anybody else. It's a great awareness to have when you were so young and obviously you went on to to do what you wanted to do, which is brilliant as well. Did you ever have any setbacks that you had to overcome? Um, setbacks. I mean, in, injury wise, um, you know, I was pretty lucky over over the years. I, I think the the biggest challenges I probably had to overcome, um, and and I I kind of took for granted, I guess, as as a, as a child, but um, was actually my eyesight. Um, so my 
my my right eye have actually got very poor eyesight now. It's had very very poor eyesight. Um, but as a as a child, I just you know obviously for 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 depth, uh, judgment and perception, you know, two good eyes kind of is a is a massive advantage. Um, but my my right eye was so bad that that's uh, I was really dependent on my on my left eye. Um, but as a, as a child, because I was um, I was always playing and I always had a ball and hurling my hand. Um, that was, you know, I, I trained my eye, shall we say, or I, I kind of you know, just got used to it. Um, but it was something I struggled with then as I got older because, um, you know, as as I left school uh, and went into college, you know, I didn't have a hurling hand every day. Um, and when it came to the, the off season or, or the, call it the winter season, um, I wouldn't, you know, I, put, I wouldn't be in school, or you know, we wouldn't be pucking a ball around, uh, you know, every day. So I, I found if, if a week or two went by where I hadn't, where I actually hadn't hit a ball, my my uh, my eyesight would be impacted, and my, you know, people say, "Oh, get your eye in." Uh, I I had to work really hard to uh, to get my eye in, and and it's looking back, it's kind of it's kind of funny, but there there will be times, you know, I could play a game in in the start of the season. Uh, January, February, and if if you saw me playing, I, I looked like a somebody who who was drunk um, in terms of because you know the dropping balls. Or I remember playing a game um, down in in Parky Ring years ago, and and uh, very early season hadn't hadn't uh, been playing, hadn't hadn't my eye in at all, and there was a ball dropping, and I went to catch it, and I missed it, and the ball landed in in my face mask and got stuck. Um, so so that was something that that I that was a real struggle for me. Um, and it, it took me time to get my eye back in. Um, so, you know, sometimes I remember playing college games where where I wouldn't have been training and, uh, you know, going out and, and I, you know, the ball was was coming at me and it was like there was, couldn't see the ball or it was, it was, it was, uh, it was like I was dizzy or, so I had to work really hard on, on, um, on getting my eye in to, to make the, make sure that my touch was there. Um, and as I say, I took it for granted as a kid because I never let my eye get out of. Uh, uh, but as an adult, uh, you know, I, I didn't have the time or, or the, the, I suppose the uh, the luxury to to be to be doing it every day or walking around with a with a, with a hurley in, in my hand every day. Um, and I think the other probably biggest challenge as well then was uh, was coming back out of retirement uh, in two thousand four when when I hadn't played for two and a half years again. Um, you know, my eye was completely out of that stage, and uh, you know, trying trying to get back and uh, trying to get fit again, and, and trying to get back in the team. That was probably the one of the biggest challenges that I've that I've had. But injury wise, um, you know, I've been pretty lucky through my uh, career not to have uh, never had the hamstrings or the cruciate ligaments or any, any of those. So uh, thought you would. Uh, I was lucky. Who had the biggest impact on your career then? Um, I guess uh, lots, lots of different people. Uh, I mean, I mentioned my brother. Uh, he was definitely paved the way. You know, he made the school team. He made the club teams. He made the, the Cork minor and 21 teams before me. He played hurling football. So he, he was definitely kind of an inspiration. Um, my, 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 my family, my parents, my sister, they're all, all great supporters. The, my the Aaron's own club, uh, you know, coaches throughout the years definitely had a, had a big impact. Um, when I look back at, at at people who who kind of did things, or you know, it might only be a single, might have been a single conversation that that kind of, for example, my uncle D.D. Sheen, you mentioned there about the the Cork Miner in 1988. Um, he was actually he was actually the person that convinced me to uh, to go to that trial, um, even though I was reluctant. Uh, so you know he kind of pushed me outside my comfort zone and and influenced me to go to that. Um, and I probably wouldn't have gone uh, if he hadn't if he hadn't kind of uh, encouraged me to go. Um, and then later in life, um, I would say Donald O'Grady uh, had a huge influence. When, when I was when I was planning or looking to come back in in two thousand four out of retirement, and I only found this out subsequently. Um, Donald rang me and uh, and asked me, you know, offered the opportunity to come back onto the panel. Uh, and obviously we, we won that the All Ireland that year, but but after that All Ireland final, 
I found out that um, some of the other selectors actually didn't want me back, um, and uh, or didn't feel that I would I would make it back. Uh, so Donal overruled um, the, some of the other selectors um, because if it was a if it was a straight vote, um, I wouldn't have been brought back. So Donald really, uh, you know, took a brave step and overruled um, the management team and, and brought me back. So that obviously had a huge impact because if you know if he didn't have that belief and if he didn't make that decision, I'd have two other and less than than I have right now. So um, you know, I was always grateful to him for that, and uh, that that obviously has played a major, played a major role in my my career. So, Brian, when you look at yourself and your career and all the games that you played, is there a performance that defines you as a hurler? Um, I, th- I think you know sometimes when, when people, I meet people, they might remind me of of particular scores or particular games. But uh, I suppose in my own head, uh, looking back, nineteen ninety nine, um, after you know a, a very lean period in in Cork hurling. Um, you know, we we eventually got over Clare in '99 in the Munster final and got into an All Ireland semi final uh, against Offaly. And um, I felt, you know, I was I was the only person on the team who had played senior hurling in Crow Park, albeit seven years previously. Um, so you know, I felt uh, that I had to stand up and be counted uh, and and kind of lead by example against Offaly in the semi final. And uh, and uh, you know, I felt I did that on the day. And obviously, we, we got into the final against. Uh, Kilkenny and, and likewise, you know, I felt I needed to, to stand up and be counted and and um, you know to win another. And I felt we actually had we had nobody was going to give it to us. We had to go win it, and uh, and I felt I had to play a key role to uh, to actually go and help Cork win it. And as I was centre back, and I felt that if I was if I was beaten as a centre back, it was going to put pressure on the team. So um, so I put pressure on myself to uh, to to stand up and, and deliver. And um, you know, so I think those. Those two games um, were very satisfactory because you know the pressure was on and uh, and they felt that it stand up and, and, and deliver and uh, we won our first all earned. Uh, so in my head, you know that that's they're the games that kind of helped define me. And what about your greatest success? What do you think it was? I think in life, my my greatest success was um, uh, convincing my. Uh, my amazing wife Elaine to to marry me and stay with me for the last twenty two years, um and uh, you know I have three fantastic kids, uh, Katie, Dell, and Ewan. Even though they're, they're not kids anymore, but um, so I think family is hugely important to me, and I would say in life that's you know that's that's been my greatest success. And uh, you know when it comes to sport, obviously winning the All Irelands uh, were were great, and uh, they were always that was my dream to 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 do that, uh, winning. Winning two county championships with, with my club Aaron Zone uh, were were, uh, were fantastic as well. So, um, you know, looking back at it, you know, family is number one to me, uh, always has been, um, and uh, you know, I I dreamt of winning all Irons. I always wanted to win all Irons, but it didn't define my happiness. And uh, if I was sitting here now with with no all Irons, um, I would still be. The same person I am, and I still be as happy as as I am now. Um, but obviously, having done it is is a great bonus and gives great satisfaction. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, there's life is bigger than uh, than, than than a game or, or a medal or uh, or a championship or a sport. And uh, to me, family is 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 uh, is everything. Yeah, well, you still did leave your mark on the sport of hurling and football as well. For you, what do you think is going to be your legacy? Um, I mean, to be honest, I I don't think of legacy. I never played the game for legacy. Um, I think what, what probably gives me the most satisfaction um, was, you know, I, I you know people may have called me kind of naive over the years for this, but I always believed in uh, playing the game fair. Play, but you know, I played hard, but I played it fair. Um, and uh, if I meet a player that I ever played with or played against, I can always be confident. I can look them in the eye, and you know nobody can come to me and say, you know, you held me, you pulled my jersey, or you hit me off the ball, or you were talking in my ear, or you were sledging, or 
or any of that kind of stuff. You know, I I, um, I always went out and to be honest, I wasn't concerned about who, who I was marking. I went out to try and to play my own game and try and try and beat my opponent. And uh, some day, some days I did, and some day, some days I didn't. But if I if I I wanted to be the better player, um, so if I beat my opponent my opponent, it was because I was the better player in the day. If uh, if they beat me on the day, it was because they were the better player in the day, and I never resorted to uh, to pulling jerseys or trying to intimidate people or or any of that. And uh, that's the thing. I'm I'm probably I, I would I would say I'm most proud of that, but I I wouldn't be able to live with myself um, if that wasn't the case. Because to me, you know, going out pulling jerseys and trying to put people off and not trying to win outside the rules, in my view, is is akin to cheating and uh, that's that was never part of the game for me um, I, I wanted to be a ball player uh, I wanted to to beat a team by playing ball um, anybody can pull a jersey anybody can trip someone up or anybody can talk crap into somebody's ear and but that was never that was never uh, something that I that I ever resorted to wanted to resort to and um, so Playing the, playing the game, not, not saying I was an angel, and I mean, it's far from uh, far from an angel. And obviously, it's a physical game, and uh, you know, I, I played the game hard, and but 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 I played the game fair, and that's to me is uh, looking back in it is is the most important thing to me. Back then, we'll say back in the the nineties and the early two thousands, it was such a special time for hurling. I was a young kid growing up in Clare, so obviously it was a an enjoyable time um, for all of us down there. But hurling was the biggest thing on the planet to so many people, and you guys were such big stars. What was it like dealing with all that attention? Um, I think I'm, uh, I mean it, sometimes. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fairly private person, so I, I tended to try and, um, I suppose, hide away from a lot of that, um, because you know sometimes I I, I always believed, and, and my experience was, you know, you're you're everything's great as long as you're winning, um, but when you're not winning, that attention isn't always positive, um, you know, so. I always felt that, uh, and and for for a lot of my early career, obviously we weren't winning, um, and you know we were the early nineties. We had our annual trip to Limerick to be either beaten by Limerick or Clare, and uh, you know there was there was a lot of criticism kind of came uh, during those years. Uh, so then when when we actually did have some success, um, you know it was clear not not to get carried away with it because you're you're as good as your last game. Um, you know, in 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 the view of a lot, a lot of the public, um, so the um, the attention was, you know, obviously it was great. It was great to win all Ireland and, and come back to Cork and have sixty thousand people cheering in 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 Cork City, and that was that was fantastic. Um, but the following day, that was over, and you 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 move on. Um, but I think the to me it was you know. I've always tried to treat people with uh, with respect and uh, and irrespective of uh, you know whether whether they're an opponent or whether they're a supporter or whether whether they're from Cork or from from Clare or anywhere yeah. else. It's uh, people are people and um, and you know obviously back in the day you'd be asked to go present medals at various clubs and that kind of stuff and that was that was part of the attention as well and that was kind of part of giving back to the game um, and. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you you you'd come across people, and and uh, the feedback wouldn't wouldn't be as positive, and uh, you know, so and I, I found over the years, so particularly when people have maybe a little bit of alcohol in them, their uh, the 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 shyness kind of disappears, and you'd be you'd be shocked at at the things people feel that that they're entitled to say to you, um, and. Uh, Sometimes it's sometimes it's really good stuff, and sometimes it's it's really bad stuff, and uh, you kind of have to take the take the, the good or the bad. But um, but because you know I was I was kind of a private person, I wasn't a big socializer. Um, I tended to to kind of show you away and stay away from from a lot of that stuff. So what next for you then? Are we going to see you coaching any teams? Do you do you do that now? Uh, I don't, to be honest. Um, you know, it's 15 years since uh, 
since since I retired and um, you know very busy with 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 work, very busy with with with, with family life and life in general. Um, and uh, you know I've been asked to get get, get involved and they've kind of helped out every now and again. But um, but you know and maybe it's it's a it's a selfish way of looking at it. But um, but I I felt I you know I gave. 25 years of of my life to uh to GA and um and probably during that 25 years didn't do a whole lot else um and uh you know so when when I did retire I it, it was I took a complete break and uh was not not involved in anything but and uh I thought that was great and fantastic and and um even though you know I, I kind of watch games but I'm not I'm not a fanatic I'm not a student of the game uh, you know, you some people who retire and and they don't know what to do with their life and they have to get back involved and they miss it so much. I I didn't really miss it, um, and there's other things I enjoy doing. Um, so you know, getting back at the county level, that's not something of in my radar uh, right now because the commitment levels have just gone through the roof. And and uh, you know, as a player, I felt I was I was hundred hundred ten percent committed. And you can't be any less if you're if you're going in as a coach or a manager, and uh, I just wouldn't be able to give that commitment. And um, both time ways, but also in reality, the you know the the mental aspect, the, the thinking and the thought and the analysis and all that stuff that, that needs to go into it. Um, I just don't. I just I don't have the desire, if I'm being honest, to to do that right now. And uh, and if you if you don't have the desire, just like as a player, if if you're if you don't have a desire and you're not committed, then you're not going to succeed. And it's the same same in management. And I just don't have that right now. So uh, I um, it w- I wouldn't be successful as a result. Well, as you said, you did give 25 years, and in those 25 years, you were part of some of the greatest days um, for Cork curling and for Cork football as well. There were some great days too, and you made some brilliant memories for people all around the country and all around the world. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for coming on the podcast today, and thanks everybody for listening and watching. Please like, review, and um, leave a comment. Thank you. Thank you.